Not that long ago on this channel I made a video in which I reacted to my Russian hometown of Chelyabinsk being featured in an episode of Family Guy and the reason why it was featured is because my hometown in Russia, apart from being the 7th largest city in Russia, is also a gigantic meme. For example, we literally had a nuclear accident in our region way before Chernobyl made it cool. Even for Russians themselves, Chelyabinsk is basically considered to be a massive meme. But also, in 2013, a literal meteor from space entered the atmosphere over my hometown of Chelyabinsk, exploded and then crashed onto the ground. And I, of course, was a witness to all of this. Well guys, recently, I found out that Joe Rogan, during a podcast with Neil deGrasse Tyson, actually mentioned the city of Chelyabinsk, and they had a little discussion about it, so, uh... Chelyabinsk mentions 74th region, Chelyabayoba. Anyway, uh... <laughs> As a Russian YouTuber, I always love to talk about when my city gets mentioned in any Western media, so... Hello Blazers, this is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian, and in today's video, we are going to be reacting to Joe Rogan and Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about my beloved hometown of Chelyabinsk, about the meteor incidents of 2013, and also, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of my testimony, what that absolutely insane day was like for me, and trust me guys, it was insane. Uh, there was this asteroid uh, that collided with Earth uh, over... Uh, Chelyabinsk in the Soviet Union, oh, in Russia, <laughs> sorry, uh, just near the... Oh my god, this moment. It just gets me every time, the fact that Neil deGrasse Tyson refers to my hometown as being Soviet Union. Which is, you know, I mean, fair enough, you guys, fair enough. But I guess you probably didn't really mean anything by it, you know? Older people just probably are used to saying all the things, you know, my grandma, she still always says Leningrad instead of St. Petersburg. Oh, in Russia, sorry, uh, just near the Siberia in the Ural Mountains, just on the coast yep. of Siberia, on the border of Siberia. That was visible to everybody in broad daylight, and you had to like avert your eyes when it happened, and they felt a shockwave, and the shockwave broke windows and sent 600 people, nearly 1,000 people to the hospital. What? How the hell did that not even get like a, wow, from Joe Rogan, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He will appear in this clip too, you guys, just don't you worry, you know? But yes, to give you guys a little more context, on February 15th, 2013, at 9.20 in the morning, a massive, almost 10,000 ton meteor entered the atmosphere right above my home side of Chelyabinsk. And essentially what happened is that the meteor exploded in the air upon entering the atmosphere, which was very loud, it created a massive shockwave and... Uh, <laughs> If you guys remember this in any way, you might remember seeing a ton of videos online of this, where you can see this exact meteor in broad daylight over snowy Russia. And the reason why you've seen a lot of these videos is also because of dash cams in Russia, which are very, very popular and everybody has them. So thanks to that, we actually have so much footage of this meteor falling down. And yes, it got a lot of people very, very scared. 600 people, nearly a thousand people to the hospital. What happened? Well, because they saw the light, and they, came, they got up from their table and went to the window to see what had happened. There's a time delay between the shock wave yep. and the light. Because light travels fast and sound travels slow. So they'll go to the windows and the shock wave hits and it blasts broken glass into their face. So it's a big band-aid collision that we had. Wow. The injured people all needed <laughs> basically band-aids. There we go, that's Joe. Wow, dude, weed, man, that's crazy. Anyway, so yes, everything that Neil deGrasse Tyson is saying is absolutely true. And now it's about time I tell you guys my personal story. Well, what was I doing on this beautiful morning of uh, February 15th in 2013? First of all, I was in ninth grade of school, so I pretty much looked like this. Exactly, this was me. <laughs> this was me at this moment in my life. And on that cold, bright February morning, I was uh, skipping school, and I was actually uh, laying down on my sofa in the living room of my parents' house. Now, guys, I usually didn't skip school, but uh, I had like a I had like a small face <laughs> in like ninth grade. And it was already getting bright outside, the sun was going up, however, it was still not fully up. Where I was, the sky was still kind of dark, so I was laying down on the couch watching some YouTube, and then I noticed with my side vision that it seems like it got super bright really quick, you know what I'm saying? Like, the sun has risen in 5 seconds, essentially, right? And then after a few seconds, it sort of got slightly darker again, and I was like, what the hell is this? 
I didn't really pay much attention to it, YouTube was more interesting. And then, just like Neil deGrasse Tyson says, there was a delay between the shockwave and the actual explosion. And what I saw in that moment, when I thought the sun was suddenly rising, was actually the flash of the explosion when the meteor entered the atmosphere. But the thing is, my windows actually came out to the other side. So I couldn't actually see the meteor or even the trail of the meteor from where my apartment was, but the shockwave did come. When I was laying on the couch, I suddenly hear a massive BOOM! Somewhere in the city, and then uh, essentially what I see in my eyes is that my entire like apartment building, everything in my vision is shaking like this. You know, it's, it either feels like you're super drunk or I guess it feels like an earthquake or something. Also, everything in my apartment started like vibrating and moving. It literally felt like an earthquake. But my first thought was actually that maybe my kami block is collapsing or something. I was completely shook. I stood up. I started to sort of, you know, half crouchedly kind of walk in towards my windows. And then after like 15, 20 seconds, everything sort of stopped vibrating and moving around. I couldn't see anything from the windows, but I looked down and I saw people running out of a store that was in my building. Also like confused and everything. So yes, yeah, so the moment of the blast, I was not near a window, but the shockwave actually did break a couple of windows in my apartment. Two windows in the balcony were completely smashed, the broken glass basically flew inside the balcony from the shockwave, I'm guessing, I don't know. And also another window in our apartment got a huge crack on it. So yeah, thankfully I got pretty lucky regarding that. Okay, no one died, but nearly a thousand people were injured. So, at an auction, by the way, that, that actually <laughs> exploded and pieces of it were recovered. Yeah. At an auction, I purchased a piece of that meteorite, but you know what else I purchased? some of the shards of glass mm. that the shockwave had broken. Wow. What do you do with this shit? I've got it. It's mm -hmm. just, I have it. I'm, I'm a part <laughs> of, it is a shot across our bow. That's what that, no one died. But it's a warning. There's no better way to Wake be warned call. than to have a band-aid cover your injuries that could have vaporized you. Yes, well, technically, this is also a thing that people don't really realize, but this event, this meteor, could have hit Earth and it could have been an apocalyptic event, basically. But it didn't because Chilabins protected you. <laughs> I did, guys. I saved your life. Me, personally. But on a serious note, in the moment, it felt like some kind of fucking apocalypse. Because in those first moments, obviously, I didn't know what was happening. I started texting a bunch of people and essentially, we all thought it was some kind of missile, maybe, or some plane that crashed or something like that. Nobody thought of a meteor. Nobody thinks of a meteor as the first thing that could fall from the sky, you know what I'm saying? But in Chelyabinsk, anything can happen, you guys. So, uh, almost immediately, I also got a call from my mom, who was at her job at that time. And essentially, I pick up the phone, right? And all I heard on the phone is like... I don't really know how to describe this, other than, you know, hearing the sounds of, like, the last moments of a plane crash or something. I'm sorry, like, but that is literally what it sounded like. It sounded like muffled sounds of people, like, screaming and running around. Just overall sound of ruckus in the background, you know, of, like, documents flying around. <laughs> I don't even know. And also, the signal was literally breaking up. It was scary, man. It literally sounded like the last moments of a plane crash. And my mom is like, through all the breaking ups and, you know, screaming of people or whatever. She's like, a plane crash! A plane crash! And I'm like, what? It was a pretty uncertain like 15 minutes, but basically we ended up getting in contact. But yes, it was pretty fucking spooky. And when we all found out that it was a meteor, I mean, it basically became a meme right away because Chernobyl is already a meme. It's supposed to be like a cursed city or whatever. So this is like just completely in character, right? And now, actually, if you go to Chelyabinsk and you visit our regional, natural, and historic museum, you can actually see a large chunk of the meteor on display in our museum. So, uh, this is one of the bigger chunks that actually fell on the ground and were collected. So, yes, yeah, so pretty cool stuff. A meteor lives inside of uh, Chelyabinsk's main museum. What's crazy is the ones that don't even make impact and still do devastating damage, yes. like Tunguska. Yes, that, that one didn't even touch Earth. Yeah. Right. right, it incinerated 10,000 square kilometers of forest. Look at that right. honk. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, so... Dude, how high is Joe? I just want to know that. I, like, how high is this man? He's literally living the dream life. He's like, he's just a guy who smokes weed and doesn't know anything about anything. And he just gets all these smart people to come and talk while he's smoking weed. Why can't I do that, man? Fuck. But yes, the Tunguska meteor was also crazy, also very famous story from back in the day, but it also happened on the territory of Russia. <laughs>
So I just find that funny. Like, why do all these apocalyptic events with meteors falling around, why do these things have to happen in Russia? Karma, I guess. I don't know, guys. I don't fucking know. Uh, there is a... Weighs over half a ton? <laughs> that that little rock was oh. a thousand pounds? <laughs> oh, yeah. Holy oh, yeah. shit. That's just a piece that made it through. Is it iron? Oh, the actual piece? Yes, one of the biggest pieces and one that I believe is actually a display in our museum was actually found in a lake nearby the town of Chibarkul, which is not that far from Chelyabinsk. It fell in the lake, but also other chunks have been found all over our region. And a bunch of people's houses and cars even got also damaged as a result of this. Because chunks of the meteor fell like on their roof or on their car window or something like that. So shit sucks, man. Don't piss off God. <laughs> but yeah. that's amazing that that small rock. Go back up to that again, please. Look at the size of that. That's not that big. No, no that's what's left over. Right. Most of it ex vaporized on that on the explosion as exactly. it came through the atmosphere. Right, but they're saying that that piece of it weighs a thousand pounds. Uh, do they give the the weight of it? Yeah, it yeah, says yeah. it okay. weighs over a half ton. Yeah. Oh, a half ton. Yeah, a thousand pounds. There you go. That's crazy. Yeah. That, that rock is that fucking heavy. Yeah. So How, is so it made the solar. Iron? This, yes. Well, the, I. I I have to read that to, to know for sure, but I think it was an iron meteorite. So yes, essentially that's pretty much where it ends, but yes, I do find it cool that Joe Rogan and Neil deGrasse Tyson mentions Chilabinsk mentions that they mentioned my beloved hometown of Chilabinsk, at least in the context of the meteor, because I guess Chilabinsk is really famous for many other things apart from the meteor and uh, I don't know, this channel. <laughs> but yes, this is a real story. This is the kind of stuff, you know, me, me, Roman no fuckers. This is the stuff that I go through. All of you guys are like, oh my god, there's a new war or whatever. We're all living through a historical event right now. Yeah, guys, sure. Welcome to my life and how many historical events I'm living through, okay? <laughs> you Westerners have nothing on me. But yeah, once again, it was absolutely insane day, super surreal, and the funniest other thing I remember about that day was that I actually, I think, just read some bullshit somewhere, probably some fake news about how astronomers have, like, are saying that there would be a possible second meteor that would hit Chilabins for the same day. And that's just like, come on, that's fucking nonsense. But I literally remember sitting in front of my computer, it was sort of kind of like this, right? Except I was way closer to the window, the window was like right here basically for me, right? So I was sitting in front of my computer and I was like scared that if a meteor was gonna hit, all the broken glass from my window would essentially fly into my face and I would like die or whatever. I don't know guys, I don't know why I thought that, I don't know why I believed that. I was like, I was 15 years old. <laughs> But yes, it was a pretty unnerving day and uh, definitely, you know, what can I say? A very great day to skip school on a beautiful, cold, sunny February morning. But yes guys, so I guess that is going to be pretty much it for today's video though. If you guys did enjoy it, please make sure to slap the like button on it. I hope you guys enjoy what I've done out here. My new setup here in my new apartment. Still not fully finished, so there's a bunch of echo. I know that the audio is far from perfect, I'm sorry you guys, but honestly, who gives a shit? <laughs> I don't give that much of a shit, but I'll try to fix it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video, thank you for all the support, and also, if you guys like me, if you guys would like to fund my uh, immigration process, <laughs> then please make sure to go over to the link down in the description and become a YouTube member. It's basically like YouTube's own version of Patreon, it's a monthly donation and it's the best way to support me. Or if you guys would like to do a one-time donation, you can use super thanks underneath this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.